feels like it's running on two cylinders. The freaking pull out, pop the hood. Can't figure out what the hell is wrong with it. Uh, one of the guys that worked there came out. He had no clue. And another guy, an older guy, came out. He says, so these trucks, it's, it's an issue sometimes when you jack them up. But, but, uh, you have to reset a fuse. Basically, you have to pull a fuse out and put it back in.
so is that, is Katie Kirk's not getting the gig? First of all, I thought Katie Kirk was one of them. Okay, she's so not getting the gig. She's, she's not the worst. Gig. And I don't think Dr. Oz is going to get this. Dr. Oz, there are plenty of people that don't like Dr. Oz for reasons other than this. So that's not going to happen. I, I got to tell you, I don't think Katie Kirk's going to get it because Katie Kirk's got other gigs. Um, yeah, they're not going to go with their day gig. Dr. Oz, I could see giving up the day, the day gig. No, I'm excited. What is his day gig? He's got a show, right? He's got a show. Yeah. Maybe he can do giving out misinformation. He does. People have. Oh, wow. 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 I mean, he's not a chiropractor, right? Wow. wow. <laughs> he's not a dentist. He's not a dentist. Jeez. Sometimes a heart attack, you still call it that. <laughs> call 911. 248 Carson Anderson, open lines coming up shortly.
it's not about you. Then you're it's you're the right. show. If he's not on deck, he's definitely in the hole. I mean, he's my doctor on. <laughs> he's in the queue. <laughs> he definitely is. It's only a matter of time. Well, we'll, we'll keep you updated. Find out if Dr. Oz goes on the list. People gave him strongly dislikes. 248-539-9797. Back to your open line calls. Next up is Mel on a cell. Hello, Mel. Hey, Dan. Hey, Mel. Uh, hey. I was just going to say that this whole thing with the attorneys and uh, the shoot the food thing is, like, so indicative of American society these days. Like, it reminds me of, like, if one kid breaks a pinky finger on the monkey bar, the entire production is shut down. And, like, you know, a thousand people lose their jobs. It's so crazy. Um, but, Dan, I have a question. If I just get to give me a second. Alright. Alright, so have you seen the show called Kingdom? About uh, the MMA MMA fighters? MMA fighters? fighters? No, I have not. A good friend of mine told me about this a couple months ago. He says, you got to watch it. It's awesome. And I, and I haven't, um, it's, I think it's, it's through Netflix, I believe. It, and I yeah, haven't so uh, set up to watch. Yeah, I hear it's great. I want. I do want to get to watch, get around to watch it, yeah. Yeah, they do it. But I have not yet. Anyway, the lawyers are uh, fun ruiners. That bugs me. Um, I mean, uh, look, we've got to do a, we're in a weird place right now. We need an alien invasion. We decided what we need collectively is an alien invasion because we, then we would all have a common foe. Hell, maybe our lawyers would be useful against aliens. We're going to try. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Carson Scott Anderson, 97 on the ticket. Nine days away from Tiger opening day. If you missed A.J. Hinch earlier in the 1 o'clock hour, you will want to hear much of what he has to say. Uh, in the meantime, Gator, did you happen to see what was posted on Instagram by, uh, about Kyle Pitts? I did not. Kyle Pitts, tight end from Florida. He's the tight end from Florida. And it was an Instagram post of him running a 40-yard dash. And he said, the, the, the caption on the Instagram post said, he ran a 4 3 5. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. That's wrong. That is it. Ran a 4 4 6. 4 4 6. That's still fast. That's pretty damn good. Yes. Um, now, the, the, the reason I said 4 3 5 is because I have a little chart comparing. To Calvin Johnson. Kyle Pitts is 6'6, 240. Calvin is 6'5, 239. Kyle Pitts ran a 4'4'6. Calvin ran a 4'3'5. About a month ago, you just kind of floated out there. You know, guys, Kyle Pitts is rocketing up the draft board and is getting talked about as one of the only sure things in this draft. Florida's Pro Day is a week from tomorrow. And I'm not even sure he's going to be on the border at 7. And if I say Kyle Pitts tight end, I think the entire, I think the tension, I can almost feel it rising out there amongst Lions fans. If I say Kyle Pitts weapon, Kyle Pitts wide end, Kyle Pitts wide receiver, you go all the way to wide receiver. If you go all the way to wide receiver, you can also line up as a tight end. And they need a receiver. A lot of box have them taken a receiver. And if this guy is running receiver speeds with tight end size, should he be on the on the radar of the Lions at seven? If he's even there. Because he's got great hands. He's very productive in Florida. 
Instagram post, right? It's an Instagram post that says, give them credit for 446. And, but if it's, you know, if he comes out and runs a 446 or better a week from tomorrow, I mean, just as, a, as an offensive weapon and a guy who can line up as a wide receiver or a tight end, should he be in play? Well, there are plenty of wide receivers in the NFL that ran above a 4 5 and are really good receivers. I think this town would flip its lid if they drafted a player and on um, you know, draft night that the commissioner says with the seventh pick overall the red lines like tight end Kyle Pitts they'd go nuts now if Roger Goodell gets up there and says at number seven Detroit Lions select wide receiver Kyle Pitts floor I think that would have everybody no, there would half the people be like okay great but the other half people oh, wait, is he a tight end I thought what wide receiver so he's gonna be a wide receiver I think people flip out because of the, of the tight end moniker but if you understand that he won't play tight end, if you're open to that, then you might smile a bit wider because he, he, it would seem like he's uncomfortable in six foot six, two hundred and forty pounds, and being able to run at that kind of speed. He's got great hands. He's got big playability, and I believe the majority of his snaps last year came um, not tight to the line of scrimmage. So it's not like he's. Uh, new ones into playing, yeah. I, I I think you have to be open to it because I would be open to it only as a wide receiver, not not the thought of the tight end. I think the Lions need to put, you know, if they're going to stay, I think they have different scenarios they would play at seven. Like if you were a GM, I would think, okay, if we're staying at seven, we're unable to trade out of seven. How many players do you put into that? I hate to use the word queue again, but how many players do you put into that queue where you would say these are who we're going to consider? You look at the wide receivers, and you've got uh, you know, the big three with, with Chase, Waddle, and, and Smith. I think you throw Pitts in there, and that's four of them. I think you think of Micah Parsons as probably the only defensive player you consider taking at seven, the linebacker for Penn State. And then you've got quarterbacks you've got to think about, and then probably Penny Sewell, the offensive tackle. So you've got roughly what, eight, nine players there that you can think about. But I think Pitts is part of that group. Now, how high up that list is he? That I'm not sure about. I don't think that he'd be <coughs> on the bottom of that list. I don't think he'd be last. Let's say that's a, an eight or nine. Let's say it's a nine-player list. I don't think he's number nine on that list. But I also don't think he's anywhere near number one. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, it, it's First of all, I'm thinking of him almost exclusively as a wide receiver. Yeah. And yeah. if he can't play that, that and I like the versatility. I mean, pockets gets hurt. He can he become you know he maybe he becomes an inline tight end. Uh, maybe you know he's good in two tight end formations. But I'm thinking him almost exclusively as a wide receiver. That forty times got to make you think. Um, and quite frankly, if the Lions are sitting there and deciding between between say Devonta Smith at 170 pounds and Kyle Pitts at six foot six inches, 240, and running wide receiver speeds, and they think he's a wide receiver, I prefer Pitts. And, but what I don't know, and I'm not a football coach, uh, is whether or not he can legitimately play wide receiver. Yeah, you have to find, uh, go into the deep dive and see is he a good route runner, right? Does he get great separation? immediately off the line of scrimmage can you do these things and that's why you want to go to a workout and see what he can do it's also important to see how he works out at, at, at the florida's pro day right you know what kind of is he is he working out as a wide receiver are they going to have him put his hand down and, and showcase you know routes run as if he were a tight end i don't know but i think that's an interesting thing and if you're kyle pitts i mean you want to be a wide receiver wide receivers make more money yeah. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Kang, you're kind of against this. I remember last time we talked about it, but now that this forty time is in, yeah, I'm a lot against it. And there's only one way I'm open to it, and you guys have mentioned it. It's got to be exclusively as a wide receiver. Tight ends. I know every draft is different, every player is different, but that, let's just look at the information we have. Okay, tight ends in the first round, and, and specifically in the top ten, 
they don't work out. Don't be fooled by these numbers. There's a reason why these other guys are drafted that high too. Great 40 times, size of course. Tight ends usually aren't small, you know what I mean? It's, it's, if he's a tight end this league, he's probably not gonna work out. Now, if he can play receiver, I'm open to it. Like you guys mentioned, can he run the full route tree a wide receiver does? Does he get the separation a receiver does? You, we look back at it, we're looking back at the tight ends the first round, right, Doug? And yep. just comparable measurables, even 40 times. Vernon Davis came up. He was, a, yep. I think, the top six pick, all right? That was 15 years ago. Had a decent career. In my mind, definitely not worth the top six pick, but he also has similar numbers in college as a receiver. Lots of receptions, lots of yardage, good touchdown numbers. Don't be fooled by these razzle-dazzle numbers because he's a tight end all of a sudden, and we're like, whoa, look at this guy. To me, they don't work out. If he's a receiver, okay, then I start looking at him. Do I like him or Jamar Chase? Do I like him or Devontae Smith? Do I like him or Jalen Waddle? That's when I, I can start to open up on it, but specifically as a tight end, no thanks. What's becoming interesting is it feels like if they really are like, if we can't trade out of it and that we can't you know, get the defensive player we want and we're gonna go receiver, I, I'm not sure about Waddle or Pitts, but the whole 170 pound thing is scaring me off Devonta Smith and the, the the wide receiver time. Like in the last 24 hours, the information we've received is Devonta Smith weighs 170 pounds and Kyle Pitts can run a 4.46. I mean, I'm advantage Pitts right now. This could change. This is an Instagram video with the caption that says 4.46. Right. This can be very misleading. And on top of all that, because I'm already against that in general. Specifically with the Lions, you have a Pro Bowl tight end already. So that's why I, I only can look at this guy if he's going to be a receiver and if he can be a receiver in the NFL. We've seen big, fast receivers and tight ends before. They don't always pan out. You know, these are, they end up being workout warriors or whatever. I know he, he played well in college as well, but like I said, Vernon Davis, other guys. If you just go back and the tight ends drafted in the first round in the last 20 years, it's not the best, man. But, it isn't. But this... This guy it just doesn't work out. There's a, there, but there's a Calvin feel to this. That's why That's if he's why, a receiver, yeah. I'm open to it. But like I said, there's a lot of things that go into being a receiver. All right, two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Jack number four, the showroom is open and they continue to make it the safest possible environment. Or you continue to do your business online and my phone. Spring into savings at Jack Number Ford and Wayne. I've been talking about the Denver difference for a while, how great they are. People behind the desk, people behind the shop. I'm sending my sales guy texts and I'm getting texts right back. That's customer service. Other places I've sent emails and I'm waiting weeks. From sales to service, they work hard to be the best that they can be. Jack Denver Ford has the best lease deals of the year on the amazing 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. The big bet package, AZ Plan customers can get a low mileage lease on the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport for only $319 a month for 24 months. $29.29 due at signing zero security deposit. The offer ends the end of the month. Stop in and see our friend general sales manager, Bob Faust, or visit him online at jdemmerford.com. Experience the Denver difference and see why Jack Demmer truly is Western Wayne County's Ford dealer. Home of the all-new Ford Bronco. Those things are sweet. Jack Number Ford on Michigan Avenue, a mile and a half east of I-275 in Wayne, just 15 minutes from everywhere. Hi, I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. Now's the time to have Hall Financial refinance your home loan. Shave years off your loan, cut down your payment, consolidate your debt. Hall Financial will help you achieve all your goals. Don't miss out on historically low rates. Go to DavidHallMortgage.com. device. 